Well, I think today is a day where you're really stress testing the holdings in your portfolio. Uh, you're looking at what is the performance of select stocks. You don't want to have performance that's worse than the NASDAQ overall. You don't want to have performance that's better than the small caps. You want to have that balance between the two. So you really have to look at specific stocks. But I think what's important here, Scott, is let's remember positioning as it relates to the fixed income market. Because there was, coming into the election, a lot of belief that you were going to get fiscal stimulus and you were seeing yields rise. And there was positioning accordingly. And very quickly that got reversed. Now that's getting reversed again. We've got a 10-year Treasury up to 95 basis points. So we always ask, where does the money come from? I think money comes from fixed income. It goes into both growth and it goes into value. One sector that I think is trading very well today is financials. JP Morgan, Citi, Bank of America, they're up near their highs. There's other names that are cyclically oriented, like Marriott. Marriott was above 130. It's now below 118. So you really have to watch how a lot of these stocks are trading during the course of the day, but expect more money to come out of fixed income into equities themselves. Yeah, Court, you've been, I guess, looking through some of the noise, um, if you will. You were with us the other day. Um, you've been looking forward to the day where we would have good vaccine information. We got that today. So what are you doing now with your portfolio? Hey, Scott, good to be back again today. So it's kind of interesting. My portfolio today, I've really kind of been just watching where I am. As you mentioned, I have been loading up on names that I liked during a lot of the dips, um, had a great opportunity to have some cash on the sideline to be doing that. And so it's working out in my favor across a number of names right now. I'm clearly most excited, and honestly, I want to jump out of my seat today just on the optimism. Um, we have hope again, and that's so critical. And we have some certainty in our markets. Another critical piece as we think about why we're up here um, today at this point in time. You know, on our desk at Loop Capital Markets today, I spoke to Andy Heilig, one of our traders. We're better to buy two to one, and all of our clients, again, are institutional clients, um, better to buy two to one. We're seeing buying in banks, but by the same token, we're seeing buys in names like Uber that one would have said, oh, it's, you know, at its high right now, should you be buying it today? That's showing a conviction in names that once this reopening happens, are going to continue to grow um, as we look forward here. So it's an exciting time, I think, across um, sectors, across names, and it is a prime time for stock pickers to do just that and pick stocks. Well, uh, you know, Josh, it seems as, as though, you know, people are buying some of these things indiscriminately today, whether it's the travel and leisure stock, some of the names that Courtney referenced. Are we supposed to go all in now on these so-called epicenter and, re and reopen names? Look, man, you know my names. You know what I'm in. Uber, Starbucks. Uh, I'm just going <laughs> Simon Properties up 25 percent today. Shake Shack up 17 percent. You know how I'm living. And I'm going to tell you something. We talked about this vaccine being a deus ex machina. And I told you that last week, I said, normally I, I mock stuff like that. I laugh at that kind of pronouncement. That one event is going to be so binary, it's going to completely change the game. But in this case, I really felt that it would. And so far, so good. There might be a little bit of a fadero in some of these cruise lines as people realize the timetable. Um, but whatever, it doesn't even matter. And Joe Terranova made the most important point. You had hundred and fifty billion dollars. I kid you not. Go into U.S. fixed income uh, uh, ETFs. hundred and fifty billion, taking the total dollar value in U.S. fixed income, which is mostly Treasuries ETFs, over a trillion dollars this year. It's ridiculous. It's earning nothing. It's like lighting money on fire if your time horizon is beyond ten years. And so you ask me, what do you do now? You buy these stocks now? Well, what do you think that money's going to do as the doses get out there into the economy next year and we start reclaiming our lives bit by bit? You think that money's going to sit in treasuries earning negative real returns versus inflation? No, of course it's not. And you know how you know? Because that money is being managed by people like me who have return bogeys to hit to help people retire. So the best thing you could do now is not look at Oh, my God, Uber's up 9%. It's up so much. Pull the chart back further. It's done nothing for two years. Pull the chart back on these stocks. 
Don't let today's action make you think like you're never going to have a chance to buy again. You will. Calm down. Everything's going to be fine. Keep watching us. Stop listening to macro smurfs. Yes.